Okay, so, um, what's up? We're here. Last video of this uh, series, so thank you for anybody who watched all of it. Uh, I'm sorry, but you're welcome at the same time. So, uh, my voice has been going out all weekend, and so hopefully it's still good for, uh, <laughs> hopefully it gets better because I work tomorrow. Uh, but right now, uh, let's plow through this, get this over, so we can move on to some, I don't want to say cooler stuff, different stuff. Because Operator's cool. When you take the time, it's super cool. <clears throat> and uh, so let's just dive in. So uh, we've gone through everything. We've gone through the oscillators. We've gone through the LFOs. We've gone through um, the filters. Today we're going to crunch in the pitch and the global settings at the same time. So, uh, there's really not an easy way for me to turn global settings off. So I'm going to leave those on, but I'm going to toggle off and on the pitch so you can hear it. So same thing as always, all operator sounds, kick, snare, hat. Um, and then, uh, the sound that I've been morphing through the tutorials. Um, so this one incorporates oscillators, uh, filters, LFOs, and now the pitch and also some global tweaks but and there is a there's a pitch bin in here as well like there's the actual pitch envelope but there's also a pitch bin on this you can't see it but I'm pointing to this second clip here so I'm just gonna play this bar real quick nine bars I'm sorry eight bars Nothing fancy, but it's a thing that I did using operator and <clears throat> uh, LFOs on a 16 note. Uh, a saw down kind of motion kind of gives it more of a percussive sound. Uh, the pitch envelope is, I have this <laughs> like to the maximum negative, so it kind of jumps into the note. So it's like a whoop, but like raising in pitch, I can't, my voice would break if I try to go high like that, but. <clears throat> starts down here. Da um, technically, since I have this on negative 100, it starts at negative 48 and then goes up to the pitch. So, um, just the sound by itself, just a. It is going up, but with the filter settings and everything, it sounds like it's going down. I'm not going to explain why that happens right now, but that's just what's happening. But it's actually pitching up. If I were to turn some of this stuff off, if I were to turn all this off, you would hear it going up. Oh, and if I go up here, so it's gliding up into the note, but when I have everything on, it sounds like it's coming, like it's gliding down. It kind of sounds like going pew, pew, pew. That's my impersonation. So, let's get operator open. Um, I had to plug in my eye lock earlier, so I have to, it's not like I'm mad, but... I have to use my push instead of my keyboard. Um, I'm not mad about it. It's just in an awkward spot because my mic is here and I have to like look around it. So, um, oh, I copied this whole thing over, didn't I? Let's get a, let's get a standard operator. This is the best way to show you. I'm just going to get a standard operator. We're not going to do much with this. We're going to play the notes. So pitch envelope, it starts off default. Um, basically you have the envelope. I'm not gonna tell you what envelope does. I've told you probably three or four times already. <laughs> so um, uh, right here, you have all the envelope settings. On the stock Ableton operator settings, you get an initial starting point of 12, a peak of 12 uh, semitones, which is one note, one Western note. So the higher I, push up the percentage on the pitch envelope means the more it's actually going to affect it. So at 100%, it's actually going all the way up to 12 notes above and coming down. To exaggerate it, I'm going to take the decay and move it to like a half a second. A little bit more than half a second. Let's do one second. Pew. 
that's how you get like that air horn sound if you were to really mess with it. Um, so what is the initial and the peak? So the initial is where does this sound start at? And the peak is basically at the end of the attack. Where is it going to end up at? So since the attack's at zero, it doesn't matter what this is. If I turn the peak all the way up, it's going to be at the peak. 48, which is four octaves. If I go all the way up on the initial, you're not going to be able to tell the difference between it being at 48 and 12 because there's zero milliseconds of it getting there. It's just coming to go straight back down to the peak. So vice versa. Uh, let's, if we turn the attack up, though, you'll see. If I turn this up, now you go up and then down. Turn the attack up to the second. It's a very long attack, but here we go. That shows you what it's doing there. Um, that's it. That's the envelope. I, I, I can't believe I explained it to you again, but I did. <laughs> um, and that's all it does. You just change what you want it to do. You can go down. So you can have it pitch up a little bit. If you have this set to here and you turn all these up to different levels, maybe have one of these uh, up at three, one of these up at two, one of these down net uh well 0.5 i say negative one but because it takes it down an octave but anyways uh turn the spread up you have some uh turn all of these onto a saw wave so then you get And turn all these with a slight release time. That's just not slight, that's pretty long. So you get that, it glides up into the note. That's the pitch. Uh, transpose. Transpose just means moving it up or down a note. Sorry, I hit the play button on my push. Um, I'm like reaching around and playing it with this hand and I'm using my mouse with this hand. I, sh I can't really reach the knobs for my push, so I have to do it this way. Um, I need to figure out a better way for this. So anyways, transpose. Just changes the note spread. Gives you some stereo wideness. Honestly, zero is mono. But once you go up to like 10%, you get a little bit of spread. I can't tell much of a difference past 10. Me personally, I'm not sure if it's just that. I use different ways to get stereo wideness anyway, so I don't really care. I never really use that too much. But like after. When you play chords, I guess I can see it working a little bit more. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So now the global settings. We talked about this all in the first episode. Uh, the filter, or not the filter, the oscillator algorithms here and how they, they run through each other. Um, basically, this is all stuff we've talked about before, but kind of in a different way. So basically, um, velocity, you can have the velocity change any one of these parameters. So how fast do you... <laughs> How fast you press the note. It's not how hard, again, the velocity is how fast it takes you from to, to go from not press down at all to fully press down. So it's a speed thing. You don't have to slam it to get it to go hard. Like if I just, if I keep my finger on the on this pad and I just barely press it, well, let's change something. Let's do, <coughs> excuse me again. Uh, since we're going out of oscillator A, let's uh, change this to volume. So if I, and it's 100% of where it's at. So I'm going to move this so I can do this. It's 100% of where it's at. So uh, if it's at negative 12, 100% would be negative 12. Uh, and then barely pressing down on it, a zero would be like muted. So my finger's on it, on the pad. You can barely hear that. I I didn't even see it register on my OBS software. Then if I hit it faster, not harder, but faster. You have that. Okay, now we're going to turn this off. I'm going to keep using the same thing. Uh, key. So the lower, the higher changes the volume. And 
then you have to put this on a hundred or you won't hear anything. You might be able to tell the difference, but that's what it's doing there. Uh, pitch spin. So if you use a pitch spin, what do you want that to affect? Uh, let's just say volume A. And my gosh, if I forgot again. That's a good way to tell. Uh, and then I skipped one here. After touch. After touch is kind of like velocity, except after you've already pressed the note down. <clears throat> Man, I'm so sorry. I hope I'm not like this tomorrow for work. But um, So you have this button. I press it down, or this note. You could barely hear it. But as I'm digging into the note, you can kind of... It gets louder, because it's like velocity, but after you've already pressed the note. This would be more like pressure-wise uh, and hard, not speed, because you can slowly roll into it. It's much easier on a keyboard with aftertouch. Um, not all MIDI controllers and devices do aftertouch, though, so that's really important to note. Yours might not do that. Um, it's that weird, not, not like, oh, mine doesn't work. It didn't do anything. It's like, man keyboard might not support it in the mod wheel basically if you have a mod wheel you can use it to do that i'm not going to mess with my push with that and that's it uh you can connect it to two different things so i was just connecting it to one thing here but you can also connect it to a different thing um and then these all change time uh uh for the key wait a minute time so if you have this on volume a Um, oh, this changes this. So this is all, this is like your global envelope. If I turn this down, everything will be, um, let's, let's set all these to negative, infinite, sustain, and then, so standard timing, very percussive. If I turn this all the way up, it elongates all of the envelopes in the entire operator. So you don't have to go around and mess with them all to make them sync together um, they will all be modulated at the same time so that's even changing the pitch envelope that took forever to get to the pitch and then back down or it was took forever to get to the pitch while the note was coming down the volume was coming down and then if I put this back on normal and then negative 100 You guys can probably hear me touching the pad, playing the pads, more than you can hear that note. So this time, 100%. Anyways. Uh, and then, oh, this is just for after touch. You can change after touch to something else. Uh, this is important pitch. So, uh, if you have a pitch bend, this shows you how far the pitch bend is able to go. So, if you're trying to build a riser and you leave this at 0.5 and you need it to go up like two octaves, it's not going to go there. So, if you're wondering why your pitch bend, like on this here, if you're wondering why that's not going up as high as you want check that on the global settings mine's up at eight or something like that yeah eight if i change it up higher it starts starts sounding ridiculous on that particular synth but if yours if once if you want it to go up that high that's how you do it um you can also go like your standard sensor like two, this one starts off at five. Voices, uh, how many notes can you play at the same time? So 20, you can play 20 notes. If you have 20 fingers, that's cool. Um, one for is really good for like mono stuff. You don't want to have multiple notes playing at the same time, but you're playing something fast. I also have this volume thing on. Um, and then uh, these last, oh, pitch. <clears throat> if you want the pitch to change these different parameters, you can do that too. 
Okay, I'm sorry, not pitch. This is the mod wheel controlling two different p parameters. Sorry, it's been a day. Um, <laughs> so voices uh, retrigger. Do you want this? All these things to take effect again? Uh, basically, every time you hit a note, I usually leave it on. I don't know of an application where I wouldn't want it on. Um, so, um, <clears throat> this is this can kind of change the tone a little bit. This interpol interpolation. It's really hard to make it sound different. Like this is for, it can save you some CPU. So if you're having some CPU issues, you could run that. Um, it's hard to really explain what it does. All I know is sometimes, like if you're just wondering what it sounds like with it off, you can turn it off. I personally can't hear anything with this particular sound, so I'm not gonna mess with it. Anti-aliasing, oh gosh, okay. So anti-aliasing, basically uh, there's this guy, um, if you can look up Nyquist and the Nyquist frequencies, basically sample rates. So when you're looking at uh, Ableton, you look at your preferences, and you're looking in here, I'm running at 48, yeah, 48,000, uh, 48,000 uh, sample rate. So basically every second, my computer is processing 48,000 samples or I guess bits of audio. And um, <clears throat> not to be confused with bit rate, that's different. I shouldn't have said bit. Um, anyways, uh, bit rate's more about volume so bitrate here's a quick lesson bitrate is about dynamics and uh, the sample rate is about frequency range so uh, the Nyquist uh, th uh, theory or the Nyquist uh, frequency theory is basically um, if your sample rate is at or more than twice your frequency range uh, then you won't get aliasing what is aliasing just Google uh, aliasing, or not Google, but YouTube aliasing sound um, samples. It's basically like a distortion that happens. Um, it happens uh, in the higher frequencies. So most DAWs, most uh, of them are standard at like 44.1, which 44.1, I believe, is it's like... So technically human hearing, I said it before, 20 to 20, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, 44.1 would give you 22.5 kilohertz um, of frequency range to work with. Now, why is it that way? I'm not 100% on why it's 44.1 is the standard. There are rumors, and it might be true, and maybe I'm getting this confused with something else, that some guy from Sony back in the day was like, I want... Um, I want a CD that's able to fit this many songs at this time or something. I don't know. That's probably, I'm getting that mixed up with something else, but, uh, it, all you need to worry about is if, as long as it's 44, one, you're good. Um, I don't know anything that goes below that. You'll hear it though. Um, so anti-aliasing on this, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it cause I have my sample right so high up. Oh, there it is. Look at that. Okay, so this is what anti-aliasing uh, with it off. If you listen, if you have headphones on and you listen, you'll hear like a weird distortion. If you turn it on. So there you go. That's what it is. And if you hear that in some of your songs, maybe your sample rate's not high enough. If you're playing up really high maybe that's what it is um which the reason why it's not happening when i have it on is because well a it's turning it on i think maybe it bypasses that the aliasing uh in ableton if you have that off because you shouldn't get any as long as you're playing within those frequencies anyways uh tone if you think about a guitar it's just a filter it's a very slight filter that rolls off some of the high end um and the harmonics up there volume makes it louder or quieter that's it we're done a um, little bit longer than I wanted to but we fit two different aspects into here I hope everybody's learned something uh, maybe next I'll do a deeper dive into making cool sounds with operator and some stock plugins or whatever I know some people are wanting um, wavetable which is fun I could do a wavetable series as well so uh, let me know what you want and uh, Thanks again. Yeah, I didn't expect to get this much response out of a simple 
stock plug-in video series, but I guess people want it. So thanks again so much and uh, have a good one.